my great honor to be here. I was one of the major team member to go through the whole project. The title is Effectiveness of Motivational Interviewing on Improving Care for Patients with Type 2 Diabetes in China, RCT, which is funded by Shenzhen Science and Technology Innovation Committee. China was the highest number recorded in the world. The Chinese government has invested heavily in primary health care since 2009, with the goal of improving chronic disease management in the primary care settings. The primary care settings normally provide traditional health talks in a didactic manner. Most of the programs focused on providing information rather than facilitating patient change. The impact of traditional patient education on lifestyle modification and changes in psychological status have been reported to be suboptimal. Therefore, it is necessary to rethink and explore a more structured, patient-centered approach in health education at improving outcomes of diabetes control. Motivational interviewing was created by Dr. Stephen Ronick and Dr. William Miller. It is a collaborative, patient-centered counseling approach that aims to elicit behavior change. Counselors use empathy and other techniques to create an atmosphere to help patients to explore discrepancies between the goals and their current behavior. The focus of MI is find and resolve ambivalence, improve patient perception of the importance of behavior change, and support them to make the change. MI also has its goal guiding principles, for example, communication style, skills, process, and four core spirit elements. Also, some research found that MI for significant improvement in the number of the patient outcomes, such as total cholesterol, fasting blood glucose, EMI, BP, and physical activity. However, the effectiveness of MI in Chinese diabetic patients remains uncertain. This project aims to empower diabetes patients by improving self-management skills through evaluating effect of PEP, Patient Empowerment Program on Type 2 Diabetes, compared to traditional diabetes health education. In order to achieve this aim, we need to evaluate PEP outcomes, such as PAID, PEI, stage of change, and evaluate effectiveness of PEP models based on MI. Shenzhen is the fourth biggest city in China, with a rapidly expanding population of 30 million people and the highest GDP in the country. Most diabetes patients in China were managed at an endocrinology clinic, while the most stable patients are treated in the community. Therefore, we choose an endocrine specialist outpatient clinic and a family medicine clinic at our hospital as well as three community health centers in the Law Hu district as the sampling frame. So totally, we recruited 225 patients. For the inclusion criteria, first patient had been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and with HbA1c between 7 to 10 percent. The age was between 18 to 75 years old and no severe comorbidities or complications, such as cancer, unstable angina, uh, or diabetic retinopathy. The patient must uh, be cognitive competent. They can understand Mandarin. Actually, the most challenge in the project was to recruit patient. Patient nowadays have a variety of ways to obtain information. Health is one of the big topics that people normally focused on. Therefore, 
We have tried many approach to recruit patients. For example, poster, brochure, doctors introduce, and some social media. WeChat is quite often used in China, so we use the hospital official account and our personal WeChat moment. We also collaborate with local newspapers and radio. Once the patient agreed to join, their names and contact information were sent to the research team for consent and randomization. They would be asked to fill in in a pre-intervention questionnaire, and post-intervention questionnaire, and at three months follow-up questionnaire. A patient could reschedule their appointment within two weeks if they were not able to attend the program. The study and the participant write were explained to all participant before signing the written informed consent. Participant was voluntary and had right to withdraw at any stage of the study. Two hundred patients were randomized to the two groups, with one hundred and seventeen receiving MI and one hundred eight in the control group. In the MI group and the control groups, six and nine patient did not finish the program, so two hundred and ten participant remaining. Twenty-two patient in the control group. And nine in the intervention group were lost at the three months follow up. As a result, one o two in the intervention group and seventy seven patient in the control groups were all included at the three months follow up analysis. Now let's have a look at these two groups. For the control groups, it held in a group lecture about ten to twenty members. In order to minimize the intervention bias, the control group lectures were standardized and adapted into four modules: knowing diabetes, healthy diet, physical exercise, and how to use medication correctly. Each lecture was one hour and was provided by one of four health professionals: pharmacist, dietitian, endocrinologist, or nurse, who had never trained. Or received any information in MI. The intervention group received an education program in small groups that included no more than ten members. The content was designed based on MI theory, and the theory of patient empowerment program consent was further informed by the hospital authority patient empowerment program in Hong Kong. The education program consisted of four modules. Once a week, that each lasts one and a half to two hours. They were grouped under the following four broad headings: knowing diabetes, diabetes self-care, healthy diet, and physical exercise. Each module started with a brief introduction to relevant background knowledge, which was followed by small group discussions about personal barriers and techniques for overcoming challenges. During the small group discussion, educators acted as MI facilitators, using group MI techniques to strengthen patient motivation. The main educator was myself, who had attended a two-day workshop provided by the co-creator of MI, Dr. Stephen Ronick.、Uh, other educators were supervised by me. All the educators were provided with a menu designed by the research team. The menu contained structured, semi-open questions to guide the educators through the small group discussions. So we can see the two groups' topic headings, duration, frequency were quite similar. Now let's have a look look our questionnaires. It including four parts: paid, PEI, state of change, and other clinical data. The paid scale has been widely used in many countries to assess diabetes-related emotional distress, and validated the Chinese language version of paid 
include both a 20 item and 8 item that also validated in Taiwan. A PEI is a scale that measures patient enablement and had been validated in the Chinese population. Motivation for lifestyle change was measured in this study based on the stage of change module to assess patient readiness to change in behaviors such as smoking, drinking, or exercise and their adherence to treatment. There are five stages in this module, including uh, pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance. Other clinical data were also collected, including height, weight, BMI, BP, etc. All the data need to collect it at baseline, uh, but the paid PEI and the state of change were also collected in the post-intervention and three-month follow-ups. Uh, first, let's have a look at the paid score. At the baseline, the paid score were very similar across the intervention and the control groups. Uh, these scores within groups were significantly improved at post-intervention and three-month follow-ups in intervention groups, but only at three-month follow-ups in the control groups. The PEI scores, all the items in both intervention and control groups, the PEI scores were positively improved at post-intervention. However, at three months follow-ups, only sustained improvement in all PEI items were observed in the intervention group. In the control group of the same period, only the item can understand my illness showed a sustained improvement. Uh, the state of change score was greater than three in both intervention and control groups, indicating our patients in both groups were more prepared to change, and their readiness to exercise were reported at three months follow-up in both groups. However, there were no statistical differences in self-reported lifestyle changes including exercise, diet, and adherence to treatment within group and between groups at the post-intervention and at the three-month follow-ups. MI group scored. For the conclusion part, our study found that MI improved the diabetes patient uh, paid and PEI scores compared uh, to traditional approach of lecture style patient education. This effect were even more obvious at the three months follow ups. The MI group scored much higher than the control groups on the paid scale, suggesting that the MI approach has an advantage over the traditional lectures in effectiveness at addressing patient perceived problematic areas. The stage of change scores was greater in both groups after intervention and at the three months follow-ups, indicating that our patients in both groups were more prepared to change and that their readiness to change could be sustained in the studied period. In our study, the MI group did not show any advantage over the control in lifestyle change readiness. This may be because the diabetes is complex, motivated metabolic disease requiring long-term and consistent management. Taking into the consideration of the environment in which people live and work in order for them to commit to a lifestyle change to achieve optimal control, Peer interaction in group MI has the advantage of generating psychosocial support from people facing similar challenges in making changes in a similar environment or context, role modeling and group problem solving. It is believed that this support and individualized behavioral skills beyond health information 
are the first steps to improving diabetes control in the long term. For the strengths and limitations, um, I can say the, the key strengths of our research is that the MIPEP approaches health education uh, as closely as possible to the existing health education model in China, uh, maximizing it, its external validity. Uh, the patient who participated in the intervention group did not receive more education time than those in the group control group, nor did they receive other care. The only difference between the MI and the control groups was the content and the patient approach. The majority of time spent on improving motivation in the MI group, while less the control groups focus on providing information. Uh, for the limitations, uh, of course, the limitations in this study is also obvious. Relatively short time follow-up times, the lack of intervention, fidelity assessment, which might have contributed to minimal effect of MI on some target variables, and the absence of objective indicator measures such as, such as home blood sugar level monitoring and uh, HbA1c. So, basically, this is for my presentation today, and uh, thank you all for listening.